Hey everyone, good evening. Hey! hey. Awesome. Yay, we've managed that. Right? This is the last session, <laughs> the last talk. So, uh, lightning talks. Um, we got um, uh, this many uh, volunteers here. I'm very glad to report. Um, so, more or less all slots are filled. We're not probably not going to run this until the very last second, otherwise, we will get uh, kicked out. Violently. So I thought everybody got uh, eight minutes and then we will, um, 30 seconds before I will stand up and then at eight minutes we will uh, friendly cut the people off with a round of applause. And we start with uh, Olivier. Thank you, Storsten. Uh, good night, everybody. I'm going to present the uh, uh, current status of the uh, help editor. Yes. Okay, so uh, basically what we have is this uh, editor is made for editing the uh, XML and um, um, we, we uh, uh, I need my computer. <laughs> well, okay, uh, let's, let's, let's go. Uh, what we have is, is essentially um, this editor, we can open and choose a file of, uh, uh, of help to open. I don't have any file in this local computer, so I can't uh, pick one. You can also save it, okay? But you also can start a document from scratch, and we have uh, set all these menus to make some XML blocks so that it makes it easier for us to edit uh, the contents of a file or to create a new file. In this case here, I will start a new HXP document. It asks me just because I'm going to clean uh, the editor and then I will have to, I will add some new things. So I say, okay. And it starts giving me this XML, which is exactly the start, the, uh, the initial uh, content of a next, of a help file. You have the meta, we have the, the help document, we have all the tags. This editor here is code mirror, okay? And with this code mirror, we have implemented not only the edition, but also several add-ons. So I can uh, display, uh, use for example, um, the full screen editing. We have a search and replace feature. Uh, we have, um, uh, auto-complete uh, tags. Everything is available for making easy to edit. Uh, <laughs> for example, here, I start my, my uh, editing here in the body. If I want to add something, I just click here, for example, and I want to make a title. So I'm going to type whatever thing here, and then, just a moment. Then I select it here, and I format it as a paragraph, or for example, a heading, such as H1. It immediately surrounds my, my text by the proper tag, and it adds a specific identification, which uh, is unique inside the file. So something that is very cumbersome for whoever edits the uh, uh, help files in, in LibreOffice is to find a new string for the unique identification. And when I'm done, I can he come here with the tools and ask to render the page. And okay, so we have resolution issues here. Well, it's it should have rendered the page on the left. Yeah, we have a resolution issue here. Uh, it, uh, the result of this page is displayed here, and uh, you can see exactly what you ha are typing. Uh, unfortunately, it's not working here. I don't. S okay. Okay, so here, well, yes, 
So here is the render page. Sorry, it should have been on the, on the, on the right. But then you have your title here. And I have also implemented the possibility to make a choice. Uh, you, those who knows uh, who edits uh, help files knows that there is difference between the systems and also difference between uh, the modules. It's uh, surrounded by this uh, switching line or switch uh, uh, tag that we use. And here is so, the, here in the results, we have also uh, other debug info, okay? And also we have implemented some, uh, some checkings. For example, I want to check if the file is correct. And it, um, it makes the validation. So first of all, checks if the XML is correct. So you have open a tag and you have also closed the tag. Check with the XML document type definition to, be, to see if the DTD is correct. And also check if there is a duplicate ID in, in the file. Okay, so before you submit your, your file, you can run these checks and it will guarantee that your file it will be uh, correct for the help, the help. Okay, we have implemented other, um, other uh, uh, niceties such as uh, in the doc heading, for example, just to come back here. Uh, if I want to introduce a heading, sorry, oh, where I am here, where is my mouse? Well, I lost the mouse. Not sure where I am. Uh, yes, it's on the other screen. No. Uh, Yes, it's closed. It's bounded here. I can't. I can't use it. So, um, okay. So here we here we are. Uh, uh, so we 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 can, for example, introduce this chunk of uh, of XML, which is the doc he heading, and it will uh, introduce here lots of. I'm oh, sorry. Lots of uh, a section ID, the bookmarks, the heading, uh, the paragraph with the A help. Everything is already there. And with some uh, uh, placeholders so that you can easily fill with the content. OK. Um, also, so base, what we have is the bookmarks, several bookmarks. You can fill the sections, uh, generic sections, the section that is the related topics, the how to get, uh, divisions that are for co basic code and Python codes. We have some uh, templates for tables. If I click uh, and add a table here, for example, it, uh, it will generate all the table for me, okay, with all the structure, and then I fill the content of the table. And we plan to, one minute, 30 seconds. And we plan to implement uh, not only to generate a patch to be submitted to Garrett, and also eventually to load the files directly from the master uh, branch and some uh, help. Uh, uh, pages, the HHP reference uh, that explain the, the okay, yes. So, should have. Hello, my name is Gusha. Uh, I'm LibreOffice developer and I'm working in, in Colabora. Uh, I will talk about uh, the uh, improving uh, LibreOffice, uh, in interoperability in LibreOffice. Uh, 
When we want to open uh, OOXML uh, based document in LibreOffice, sometimes we can uh, have some problems. Uh, to solve uh, them, uh, first, uh, if, if we have a bug report, first, uh, reproduce to, uh, we need to reprodu reproduce the bug. Uh, and second, uh, we simplify the uh, bug, bug document because uh, we need to focus on the uh, problematic part. Uh, do, uh, we should do it uh, step by step and uh, check it after every step the bug still uh, there. Uh, if it's possible, uh, we, can, uh, we should uh, create the bug from scratch. Uh, after, uh, we should try the bug uh, in older LibreOffice versions. If there is no bug in, other, uh, in older uh, versions, uh, it's a regression. Uh, and we can use git uh, bisect tool to find the guilty commit. <coughs> the uh, and the documents uh, OD, ODT, uh, DOCX, PPTX, uh, these all uh, documents it's zip compressed files. Uh, when we open it, uh, unzip, uh, we can use read the XML files, uh, and we can uh, pick some clues from uh, that XML files. Uh, the files uh, will uh, are uh, are readable, but uh, XML lint tool is uh, cor uh, corrects the indentations. Uh, uh, if, uh, if if it's possible to create uh, a correct document, uh, we can uh, compa uh, compare uh, problem and problematic and non problematic files. <coughs> uh, to solve the bug. The MELD is a great tool for this compression. Uh, it has a nice visualization and it allows us to uh, compare the directories. Uh, after that, uh, when we pick up all the uh, clues, uh, we should grab on the source code uh, and debug and try to fix it. Uh, I want to give an example and that I solved before. In this bug report, uh, we have a document that we save in LibreOffice and open uh, again. Uh, we missed <coughs> three digits after the comma uh, in the chart label. Uh, uh, while I so solving, first I reproduced the bug. I saw uh, the bug. I see. I saw the bug is there. Uh, the uh, simple, uh, the document was uh, in enough simple. Uh, I tried it with older LibreOffice, but bug, <coughs> bug was there. Uh, it's not. A, it was not a regression. Um, for I examine the uh, chart label in uh, chart label properties in. Microsoft Office, and I saw the, the percentage checkbox is checked. Uh, I looked for the corresponding feature in LibreOffice, and I found it. Uh, I, I debug it uh, uh, how to learn how it works. Uh, after, uh, I unzipped the file, and <coughs> I found a suspected uh, tag uh, here, the known format format code. When I uh, compare them uh, before and after uh, the file, uh, saving the file, uh, I saw the format code missing in buggy file. Um, <coughs> I read the related uh, OOXML uh, specs and learn uh, what uh, that tag uh, does. Uh, I grabbed and debug where the uh, Excel is ex export uh, code, and I found it. Um, and I have added the format code attributes in the num format uh, tag, and I saw this. Uh, all about this, uh, picking some true keywords uh, to grab in LibreOffice. 
The other part is your um, code reading skills and debug skills. Uh, that's the uh, patch uh, that I sent. And that's all. Thank you. Hello, test, test. <laughs> okay, I'm Svante Schubert. Pleased to meet you. Why well, is looking up? I'm, I'm going to give you a disruption warning now, a 10-minute disruption warning. I wasn't sure if it's three minutes or four or five minutes, so I only got 10 slides. I would have taken more. So um, while he's trying to find... Yeah, just found screw mount. It should be possible. Uh, Windows, I believe. Oh, no, few, sorry. Great. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so this could be LibreOffice, and I hope it won't become LibreOffice. So I give now, fair enough, a very short disruption warning. Disruptive in the sense of, uh, just a second, do I use this one? Yeah. Um, in the sense of um, disruptive feature. I have in mind like Nokia, one of the leaders. I loved my Nokia phones. I was, I was, was very proud of my Nokia phones. But then the smartphone came and they were gone, right? So I'm proud to be here with LibreOffice and I don't want it that it happens again. So what kind of disruption might happen there? So we have in the TDF um, a new toolkit, more or less new. It started with Sun at, in the beginning of 2000s. And we, we put all the Java source code we have to manipulate ODF um, documents. And it went from Apache now to DDF and was forked by, um, by the Open Exchange for their backend. And um, I merged it back. And soon, you see, there's a snapshot 100. This feature will be integrated. And this is all. Wait a minute, how can I do this? Okay, just a second. Try to. Oh, yeah, it is wonderful. All right. So that's very simple. So all we're doing now, it's just a green box here, not a black box, because it's open source. So we drop in the text document, and it becomes a um, totally equivalent sequence of user changes. So we're entering now the realm of changes here, and you can merge new changes back. Why are we doing this? Because we don't want to, as a software developer, zip our source code repositories and then send them to other developers um, if we share our work. All we want to do, we want to dispatch commits, diffs, changes, so we are able to merge them back. But it's impossible. We have zipped XML, and these are like repositories, and we need to come down to changes to really do collaboration, like an asynchronous uh, offline collaboration where we, can, um, where we can work together in a more comfortable way. Um, this is becoming soon a TDF uh, feature, and I'm going to document now. I'm just documenting. That's all the work you're doing now. So in the end, I would love to standardize even the changes. So not only the full zip repository is being changed, but there's some ODF change. <laughs> and you see, um, it doesn't matter how we serialize it. It's the user knowledge of these things, the entities. When I phone you about my change, I'm going to call you, hey, by the way, in the third paragraph, the second letter, please delete it, okay? If you, if you phone my mom, she doesn't know anything about ODF or so what, but she's sitting in a phone Libre office, and you tell her there's the table, there's the image, then there's a paragraph, and this paragraph, go to number, um, now make the thir uh, third character to the fifth, please bold. And that's the way we, we go to the semantic level, which is stable, and we are going to standardize these semantic entities and send them around. So in the end, we do a fine collaboration here. So why is this so cool? What can we do now? So we are, first, I stand, we, we're no longer sending repositories. We're going to send changes, right? So we might be as GitHub. We can say there's some famous author now having his book outside, and he doesn't want to get copies because it's a very huge book. But you can send a GIF, uh, sorry, a, a GitHub pull request say him, oh, by the way, this 1,000 countable thing that's being a paragraph, there's a typo. Please delete it. And he can take, just to take a look at this tiny thing, a change, and he can say, oh, cool, I merge it. There's no bad jokes in this uh, copy he might receive. So it's very easy and very comfortable. And of course, 
um, version systems like Git, currently they are only line-based and uh, there's only binary file. But if we go to an abstract semantic level, then we, we can say, um, what are the difference between two th versions of this uh, contract, for instance? And somebody say, okay, we just return these changes we just defined. And you say, oh, um, and the third, there's a new third paragraph and the fifth one we've deleted, okay? So we can come to a new level of um, collaboration and handling with documents, right? And I think one of the most powerful things is that these changes are already exist among multiple, not only ODF applications, but um, in HTML there are paragraphs as well, and there's bold italic and tables, and they do the same operations, like insert a row, insert a column, and you can even load an ODF document, a full featured document, in a VI, in text document, Emacs, by simply saying every line is a paragraph, and there's text. And we just receive from all these changes, um, these changes that are about paragraphs and tables, and align, um, reorder the positions to addition, in the editor, doing uh, additions, and then we merge these changes back and filling all these features that are, were known earlier back in, so we are merging changes back, and not like we always do with the floppies, load everything, save everything. So when you ever edit it with LibreOffice, Word, a very huge document, and you make a small change and said, oh, I better save, I don't want to lose it, and waiting and thing, everything is being saved. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to do, because all you have to do now is to save only the change, or just to merge it back. So it's becoming much, much more faster. And if we all got copies of documents, and you give me back your changes, or a single change, I don't have to look at all the documents and parse them, I just take the changes, each one, and put them together. Yes, compare these changes. So the, the merge is no longer dependent on the, on the size of the document, but the amount of changes, all right? So, and so we have a different level of interoperability, and um, we'll see how it's going to um, And why are we in danger? Because it's very hard to implement in LibreOffice. Um, people are not, um, customers are not demanding it because it's, they are not aware that it's possible. And it's very hard, uh, I heard from developers, to implement, implement it in a way that's being, um, that you see something. Like I asked Michael Stahl what he needs, and he said, I need a time machine. Because the design, what was chosen the 80th, was totally different from floppy disk, no internet, to the current days where we've always the internet and we're collaborating with ourselves all the time. And so, if there's no danger yet, right? There's only this tiny backend tool, not frontend, and nobody is aware of this feature, maybe you are, but um, no user knows it. But if others taking this up and building, let's say, like CAK 8.5, which have changes in their model um, by design, um, using, this to, using this to load and edit um, um, Office documents with ODF and embracing Git, then it's becoming very, very powerful, and then we are in a danger. So what I'm suggesting here is that we are, oh no, sorry, that was an old slide. We are, we are, we are really implementing it, right? We, and if we are not doing it, then I think the Document Foundation if, um, should take care of and it's not for me because I'm not actually coding in LibreOffice, but um, I think it's important that we have this in our view. Okay? Thank you for listening. Now, my talk is about bin bags. Not really, um, but the FOSDEM um, organizers came in before, so sorry for a bit of <laughs> disturbance during your talk, but they said if we have any rubbish left, uh, we need to collect it together. So if you've got anything you don't want to take with you tonight, we'll just put it all in the bin bag here, yeah. Close the windows and, because you know, I think they're all working voluntary and they're doing the best they can, so we'll, we'll leave that there. Now, um, 
One of the biggest problems we have in an open source project is um, crediting contributors and making them feel, um, uh, showing that we're really grateful for everything they do. Obviously, we can invite them to conferences, uh, we can send them stickers and small merchandise and gifts like that as well. But what are some other ways, how, how can we say thank you and make them feel really um, appreciated? And one way is with open badges that some of you may have heard of before. So this is the super short description, open badges, verifiable, portable, digital badges with embedded metadata about skills and achievements. So these are PNG images with metadata inside to um, show what somebody has done, why they are awesome uh, as well. Um, the Fedora project uses them, I'll show you in a second. Um, good way to show appreciation to contributors and um, it's hosted, it's its own open source project. Here's how Fedora does it. So. These are all people in the Fedora project, active, all their usernames, and when they hit a certain milestone, when they've done something, they get a badge. They have lots of automated systems set up for this as well. And they, they make it into a sort of friendly competition between people in the community. So if you've done 150 git commits or wiki edits or 150 somethings, you get a certain badge as well. So. And then they show who's leading in the week, who's leading in the month. They gather all the information from all the different activity in the Fedora project, and then they give these badges. Now, you can decide, you can define what these levels are, what these thresholds are. It can be for the first time somebody commits, actually gets their patch committed to the LibreOffice source code tree, they get a badge as well, you know, cool. We can decide all that as well. So. Slightly boring technical stuff, but the badges are defined by JSON files as well, so just involves um, poking around in those. Three files, the issuer, which in this case is us, LibreOffice, the Document Foundation, the badge class that uh, defines the type of award we want to give, so maybe for 100 wiki edits or for 10 code commits, a thousand questions answered on Ask LibreOffice, our user assistant website, for instance, and then this JSON file that's very specific for the person who gets the, uh, gets the badge. So here's an example, again, not super exciting, but just so you can see, this is who gets the badge, this is when it was issued, but this is very important as well, this, um, this is super important, this verified thing, because when we issue a badge, and if somebody wants to show off that they have a really nice badge from the Document Foundation that they've written 20 code patches or answered 500 questions, with this, it can be verified that we issued the badge. So it's not just somebody has opened a PNG image in a hex editor and poked all this data inside. And this is, in, this is good when people really want to show off their badges for future um, uh, work opportunities as well. So to say, I've, got a, I've contributed a lot to a big project like LibreOffice, and I want to show that. I want to put it on my LinkedIn profile or um, social media. It's not just a, a little cutesy thing that, that they're given, but actually, like, this is real stuff that the LibreOffice um, project has shown. They appreciate what I'm doing, and I've contributed enough. So we have a, a couple of badge designs, thanks to our community as well. Um, I quite like this one personally because I think it's quite quirky and fun. Um, but if, again, if people want to show them off on their, on their LinkedIn profiles and, and they really want to use it to, to further their job opportunities, then something like this may be better. So we'll have a bit of a discussion in the design community. Maybe use both, let's see. But we have this working. The tooling is set up as well. Um, so the plan is now, let's go ahead and do it. So after, in the next few days after FOSDEM, we can start giving badges to people for their work. Um, we can, thanks to um, Gilem and the infrastructure team as well, we can get lots of statistics from different services and tools in the project. So we can run commands to see who has answered 500 questions on Ask LibreOffice, who has made 500 wiki commits, whatever, code commits as well. I think even bug reports, there's, there's, there are a few other things we can do. Gather the data. Um, my plan is to initially give badges to people personally. So to generate a badge and then email somebody and say with a personal thanks for, for your contributions. Um, so to start off a bit smaller, but with a sort of customized message. The way the Fedora guys do it, which is cool, is it's all done automatically in this nice system. Uh, maybe we can go to that as well. We can aggregate lots of data and issue the badges 
automatically. But I think at the start, I want to send them to people and say, thanks a lot, you know, we really appreciate it. And here's something, it's not just a, a nice shiny PNG image, but this has data that you can then show to a potential employer. Um, yep, so that's the plan. Um, do it personally for now and then automate it later. Um, then maybe some of you will be receiving badges from me soon as well. So, and then you can open them up in a hex editor and check that they're real. <laughs> that's the plan. And I think that's it. Yep. Was that eight minutes? So Kenny. Uh, it is awesome. Uh, but for the, uh, for the con uh, verifying, uh, like it should go through half a little office log so that like, uh, you can tweak the server. OK. Uh, it shouldn't be like a new design of the office.org, but half the uh, office.org slash badges slash whatever, which redirects. Okay, sure, yeah. We're just using new design at the moment for testing purposes, yeah, yeah, but yeah. But, uh, so if it is for verification... Uh, that's a good point. I'll make a note for when we implement it live. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay, now Nicholas with some uh, demo on a tablet. <laughs> Most probably it won't, but we'll see. So um, let me just introduce myself. Um, I have a fancy um, app here and a fancy device, um, and I would like to show you what we did in the last couple of months. So my name is Nicholas. Um, I work for Adfinis, a Swiss um, free and open source uh, service provider, and I will become a deputy board of directors um, for the TTF soon. You can also follow me on Twitter, where I use the um, Nick's Law um, Twitter name. So what you can see here now is um, LibreOffice more or less running on, um, natively on an iPad. Um, I would like to explain a little bit what we did here. So this is not um, online, so I can actually uh, disable Wi-Fi and everything will uh, work um, as it should. So the app is um, using the same code base as um, LibreOffice Online does, and it's also the same as we, we are using on, on Android. So, um, Candy showed it um, uh, this afternoon as well. And I would like to show you a couple of um, things that we can do with the app. So um, if you open the app, what you actually see is the, the native iOS uh, file manager. And I prepared a couple of files just to show you um, a couple of easy things. So let's start with the uh, text document. Um, there, um, you can see that it's more or less the same uh, use, user interface as we have in, in, in online. But we have some um, things that you can do um, using the native functions that iOS provides. So for example, I can use the emoji keyboard to add some um, emojis or um, I can copy and paste pictures from, from the browser, for example. So if I have this little animal here, oh, okay, yeah. So the browser is offline uh, now as well, but um, <clears throat> let's just connect to the Wi-Fi again. Um, I can copy and paste pictures um, from other um, applications to, to the app as well. Um, we can use um, things uh, with the finger. So you cannot see that I touch the screen, but um, if I want to resize, the table, I can actually do that with, with my finger. I can also just tap on one of the gray areas um, around <coughs> the table to select things and make them bold, for example. Um, we also have quite big um, handles around um, the picture to just resize them with the finger. You can also rotate them. Um, <coughs> you also have the sidebar, for example, um, which you already know from, uh, from the desktop version. Um, and there you can also see that uh, we have quite big um, widgets to just uh, use uh, them with the finger as well. Um, <clears throat> what I also especially like is um, if we use um, the spreadsheet component, um, 
you can actually use the hardware keyboard. Um, that was uh, not possible until I think iOS 13 or something. So now if you um, want to select the cell range, you can do it with the handles as well, but sometimes you just want to use the keyboard so you can just use the usual um, shortcuts like shift and then um, just use the arrow keys on the keyboard as well. Same also works uh, for formulas. So if you start to write the formula and then um, you can use the, um, the hardware keys to actually select the range as well and um, do things like that. You can also just um, select the range of cells, insert a diagram and um, these things will also update. So if I just use um, a much bigger number here, you will see that the diagram will change. <coughs> and um, this all works natively or, or like you don't need an internet connection. And we can also have a look at the impress part. So um, there's a, a slide deck that um, uh, I prepared and um, of course we can, can edit things here, um, change the text and then start the slideshow, navigate to those slides, have um, charts here as well and um, you can um, edit everything as you would expect. Um, there, of course, are still a number of things that don't work. Um, it's still a work in progress, um, but I think the next um, release, the 4.2 release, um, should bring quite a bit of um, ni nice, uh, nice uh, new features. One thing that I also would like to show is um, the dialogues, the native dialogues um, that you should know from, from LibreOffice. They look a bit um, like iOS um, native dialogues with those green switches and um, yeah, um, things that um, are big enough to actually use with the finger. So that's more or less um, what I would like to show. You can download it from the store, from the Apple store. I have it somewhere open. It's um, right now um, you can use the Collabora build and I would like, like to sincerely thanks also the, the developers from Collabora for their support, for the heavy invest uh, they uh, did. And um, it's fair to um, give them a, a short applause or pay, pay them a beer later on. So if you use Collabor of Office, the search term, you should find uh, the version. Right now it's 4.1 that you can find, but I think you should get 4.2 uh, through test flight and also as a final build in a, in a couple of weeks, I hope. That's it, thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs> No questions? Good. Thank you. Okay, so it's me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. So it's um, what I'm talking about. It's not going to be um, about um, LibreOffice for a change, um, but it's about something that I care a lot about, which is uh, digital workflows. Um, so I was hacking a bit with Bubbly on something that many of you might know, which is Poplar and Ocular, which is some. Um, um, one of the more um, uh, uh, more popular um, uh, PDF viewers on on free operating systems. Um, so, since this is uh, not a native Linux, I'm just gonna play some um, screencasts I was ta uh, I was doing. So, the problem um, that um, um, arises uh, obviously these days is that you that you want to sign um, documents digitally, not, not print it out and paper and then scan it again. Um, so that, that's a feature that's broadly missing. 
uh, except for LibreOffice. So LibreOffice can do that, um, but there might be documents that you're not generating in LibreOffice, so what are you going to do? Um, so, well, this document is generated now in LibreOffice, um, but um, um, what I'll show you now in a moment um, while I'm trying to save that down um, is that, uh, so that there's two patches um, to merge requests, one for uh, Poplar that's more or less building on something that someone did four years ago, uh, which started that. And then um, I took quite a bit of code um, from LibreOffice um, that was done, I think, but uh, with this uh, crowdfunding from this uh, uh, Willem Tox project that got this uh, uh, Pardes um, extension, so that's like timestamping authority and other nice, uh, nice things. Uh, and put that into Poplar, which is um, the, the, let's say, the low-level PDF uh, um, reader and renderer. Um, and then added as a bit of UI on top, um, which, no, no, that's not me, that was bubbly, but I was kind of just doing the, the finishing touches in the last uh, few weeks. Um, so while this is building, I wonder if I can just forward that. It's getting a bit boring. Um, So yeah, let me let me just ramble on. So um, <laughs> right. So um, actually, I think I skipped too far. Um, so that's the um, the actual document that was signed already. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't. There's no keyframes there, so it always has to. Oh yeah, there there we go. So that's the. The, the generated uh, document with a signature stamp and the Pardis, um stamp of approval there in LibreOffice. Uh, I should probably scroll back a bit further so that you can actually see um, that it's Ocular doing that. And the, the, the workflow is essentially like like an um, um, an, an Acrobat or other. So you, you just um, yeah you you open some. Draw some rectangle. Okay, there we go. So that's the document. You pre you you bump the sign button. You you draw a rectangle where you want to put the signature. Um, you select your your certificate. Um, you sign it. Um, eventually, I will do that there. <laughs> right. So. That pulls the like like LibreOffice as well pulls that out of the uh, NSS defaulting to Firefox but configurable key store, um, and then eventually selects that. Yes, come on. <laughs> okay, and then saves that and reloads that and. Um, it's all there. Okay, so this is, um, right now, this is in review. The, the idea really is um, to have, um, um, with pure open source, to have um, the complete set of tools that you need for a fully digital workflow where you don't need any proprietary software anymore. You don't need to go and, and have clumsy workarounds or worse, printed to paper. So, and yes, there it is. Okay, <laughs> bored you enough. <laughs> um, let's pause that for the moment. Any comments, questions? We have a bit of time. Great, thanks. <laughs> See anything?
All right, uh, you've seen a lot of very professional calls, uh, talks in this lightning talk session, and uh, even one with a LinkedIn link. Um, in the early days of LibreOffice, it was a little bit more cowboy. So who, who knows what will happen if I press return here? <laughs> right. It takes some time, but uh, after that, my slow SSD should find that uh, this hasn't been optimized from 1989 till LibreOffice 6.0, and there was a talk by Michael Stahl. Are we optimized yet? And since then, we are optimized. Okay. So it was only 20 years. Um, so trigger warning drugs. What number do you expect to come out of that? It's not one line, so it's... <clears throat> if you want to see an especially interesting one, uh, maybe look at that one. Uh, I'm not doing this uh, to protect the guilty. Um, who knows what will we find with this? <laughs> yeah, that, that was, I think, it was in when LibreOffice started, and it's still in. Uh, who's German here? <laughs> okay, so let's let's quickly see this one for you guys. And uh, if you want to make a German very happy, you can ask them to explain the joke to you. Um. <laughs> All right. And finally, uh, I also want to, like this whole talk is essentially be careful. It never forgets. Um, the last one. We also have storyteller. <laughs> the guilty are smiling. They they know what's coming. <laughs> we also we also have storytellers in the project. Um, I really love this uh, source code comment. And with that, thank you. And uh, let's have a nice little round of. Uh, uh, fun tonight. Thanks.